Judges are ready, and the fighters are ready. Ciudad de los Angeles, dile al mundo, make some noise if you are ready! <laughs> Presentando primero la esquina azul, con los pantalones de azul con blanco y un peso de 130 libras. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue and white, he weighed officially 132 pounds, 30 pounds. Un record de 24 victorias y 8 derrotas, 16 ganadas por nocaut. His professional record in 32 bouts stands at 24 victories. 8 defeats with 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Presentando de Managua, Nicaragua, el gemelo, Rene Alvarado. Y su oponente en la esquina roja, con los pantaloncillos rojo con negro y dorado y un peso de 129 libras y medias. His opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wears tonight red, trimmed in black and gold. He weighed it officially 129 and one half pounds. Y tiene un record perfecto con 15 victorias. Cero derrotas, un empate y 12 ganadas por nocaut. He stands perfect with 15 victories, no defeats, one draw and 12 wins coming by way of knockout. El invicto hijo de Maracaibo, Venezuela. Here is Roger, the K. Gutierrez. Good job. Rene, caballeros, recibieron sus instrucciones en las reglas y los fouls, y espero que las sigan, OK? Siempre protégense. Desen la mano y regresen a su esquina. Ready to go, our main event, eight rounds. Y saludos a todos los que están mirando en Venezuela, también a todos en Nicaragua. Quizá en Venezuela me guardan una arepa. Con mi pana allá en Venezuela. Roger Gutierrez. The kid is his nickname. He's in red. 15 and 0. 12 knockouts. The big test tonight is how many of those 12 knockouts were legit. He has some pop. The opposition, though, has been suspect. You question it. We are very honest here. That's why tonight, Roberto Diaz, go the boy matchmaker, put him in again, Rene Alvarado, to see what this kid is all about. Oftentimes, it's not if you win, it's how you win, and those were the words of Robert Diaz, and certainly using this fight as a gauge or a barometer as to how does he perform against Alvarado in the past. Recent history has brought fights to Joseph Diaz, which was a very close winding affair at the LA Sports Arena two years ago, then also Andrew Concio and Manuel Tino Avila. And you mentioned the record, Beto. A lot of the times when you come from that part of the world in South America, you might build up a record, but the problem is it may be akin to empty calories. Not a lot into it. Gutierrez started boxing at the age of 10, made the national team. His dad was a big fight fan, took his son to the gym. His favorite fighter, Oscar De La Hoya. He was working as a mechanic, uh, balancing tires and wheel alignment. As recently as six months ago, Venezuela, he's in the, the knockouts, the record. There's not much money down there unless you're Jorge Linares, who doesn't live in Venezuela. Made his bones in Japan. And there's a good right hand. And one note about a guy like Jorge Linares, who's certainly one of the great stylists of this game, he was actually brought out to Japan relatively early. And then I remember him being a sparring partner for the likes of Manny Pacquiao at 19, 20 years old, was kind of brought out during his incubation period. That, certainly that sped up his development. But we'll see where Gutierrez stands right now at age 22 years old. Watching Roger Gutierrez de Venezuela, a pana. We have Rene Alvarado from Nicaragua, El Pinolero. They're going at it, eight rounds in our main event tonight. I think Alvarado's having a pretty good round number one. He is landing the majority of the clean punches at times, simply beating Gutierrez to the punch. Without a doubt, the most difficult, most experienced fighter that Gutierrez has ever seen. No 
Jinder from Gutierrez coming out. 10 seconds in the go in the opening round. One thing that's evident, and made the play in the second half of this fight, Beto Gutierrez was much bigger than Alvarado. Oh, he's much taller. Yeah, and you're looking at his frame from his back and shoulder. But I did give round number one to Alvarado. He's here for the first time in his, his life. Well, yeah, we remember it. Nico Valdez also dies his hair. Nico wins. Though. He's married, has two kids, his wife, Saludos a la esposa de Roger Gutierrez, Sandra. Nika Victoria, Roger Jr., six months old, they're watching in Maracaibo. Grew up in the neighborhood of Cuatri Centenario, said Roger Gutierrez. And the way I've been told in that neighborhood, you fight your way out of that neighborhood. He was fighting in the streets, got himself into the gym. Actually trains at Luis Aparacio Gym, El Grande, there in Maracaibo. But this is completely different. This is also having to deal, he had to go to a media workout on Wednesday, where he saw Takashi Mira, Miguel Burchell. People asking him questions, doing interviews in English and in Spanish. All completely different experience when you sign with Golden Boy. Right, and Beto, beyond that, he's facing perhaps his first live guy, and he might be bigger than Alvarado, but early on, the shiftiness and the movement of Alvarado is troubling Gutierrez, who simply can't find a bead on the Nicaraguan. And Gemelo, the twin, is his nick nickname, Rene Alvarado. His brother also fights. He started boxing at the age of 16. Alvarado was actually a soccer player, but he said he was getting so many fights on the pitch that somebody said, you know, why don't you go to the gym, make some money out of this? Not that he had a temper, it's just he was really aggressive on the soccer field. Got into boxing, loved it, here he is. Fighting the United States with a record of 24 and 8, trying to upset Roger Gutierrez, take his O away. Oh, and you can just see again Alvarado being very shifty, being very elusive, and then just really quick hitting with these combinations and just beating Gutierrez to the punch. I think one minute to go, this could be another round for the veterans. This is a fight that our man Ryan Scalia watches everything that he was really interested in about. And also Barbosa Box said this was a huge step up for Roger Gutierrez. So the hardcore reporters that know, know something about Rene Alvarado that would give a fighter like Roger Gutierrez trouble. And we're seeing that early on in the fight. Got to figure him out. Usually by this time his fights are over. Yeah. Ten seconds to go in the second. It is scheduled for eight. The main event, the LA Fight Club in downtown Los Angeles, Venezuela, against Nicaragua. Let's look at the weigh-in. Well, because right here in that corner, we used to sit there, so the, they would always tell us, and we would hear what referees would tell them, usually the opponent, you can't wave your towel like that in California. That whole helicopter thing. I don't know why, but hey, California rule. Third round. The kid, Gutierrez, nickname, give it to him by his manager. When I met him, he looked like a kid. The name just stuck. Right now, it's very simple. Alvarado can hit Gutierrez a lot cleaner than vice versa. Gutierrez simply can't find Alvarado right now. At least not consistently. Rene Alvarado. The Nicaraguan asked about that guy, Pinto. He got a big smile on his face. Dennis Martinez Stadium, he runs around it. El Presidente. Oh, threw a no-hitter at Dodger Stadium, I believe, in 1990, yeah. 91. Great expo. He was wearing the powder blue expo, oh, yeah. too. This is also with Rene Alvarado. You, you see this name? Okay, who's he fought? Okay, good fight. But I asked him about this, like, you know, the direction your career is going. It's like, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. 
I beat him, I can go back. You know, even in losing to Yuri Gambo, and he lost that fight convincingly, he was still able to score a knockdown yes. against the Cuban. Yes, he did. Who then lost to Robinson Castellanos, who then catapulted himself into a title shot tomorrow night against Jezreel Corrales. But again, you can see the command and, and the expertise of, of superior technical acumen from Alvarado. Controlling it, as he has been on the bigger stage. Alvarado, see, you also mentioned he got knocked out by Andrew Camcio. He said the night before, as he told me at the workout the other day, like, I'm not making excuses, but like, I overtrained and I was dehydrated. And that was actually a very good fight. Now, I was pretty surprised that Alvarado did get stopped by Camcio. He said that he had nothing in him going into that fight. You know what? I got to tell you, right now, Alvarado. His confidence seems to be surging, and he is now really starting to punch downhill with some aggression and sitting down on his shots as he wings another left hook to the body. 28-year-old Rene Alvarado. I get the sense, Beto, that Gutierrez has been the bully in the ring based on his size. I don't think he's ever been backed up like this, like he is tonight against Alvarado. He spars with Yoan Perez. Oh, my, Ooh. Perez is bigger. Good right hand landed by Alvarado. The quality of work. We don't know much about this Gutierrez kid, but right now, Rene Alvarado asking him, what do you know about him? He said, nothing. Well, I don't need to know anything. Here's what we know. Alvarado's 24 and 8 is a lot better or more meaningful than Gutierrez's 15 0 and 1. And he runs another good in, right. Another right hand. Followed by a good jab. Another good round. But Alpino Lero, Rene Alvarado. <laughs> They're enjoying the, their countryman, Rene Alvarado, looking good through three. They're drinking that rum down there, Steve. <laughs> Feeling good. They should, because their guy's looking good right now. Here comes another tweet. I have it. Tengo mi pitaya. <laughs> it's Friday night in Nicaragua. <laughs> you're drinking, and the dude that you're cheering on, because there's not much you can cheer for. Right. And Johnny, National pride. And as Johnny Kemp just said, just got paid. Um, <laughs> but right now, Rene Alvarado is just mastering Gutierrez. Gutierrez seems to be getting more and more discouraged. And you see him now, he's so defensive. And it is now Alvarado, despite the size disparity, when he wants to be the aggressor, he is. Marco Palayo, accountant for Golden Boy, Bishop Amat, LMU alum, watching in Pomona. Marco's the one who has to cut the check, so I gotta ask him, how do you cut the check to a fight in Nicaragua and in Venezuela? And it looks like Alvarado wants a bonus from Marco Palayo. Beto, that was a left hook. Yep. Oh, that's a good right. Another good left. As Alvarado keeps coming, bringing the pressure. Tonight, Roger Gutierrez is being introduced to professional boxing in the United States. And quite frankly, it's been a very, very rude welcome for Rene Alvarado. He's being introduced to professional boxing. Yes, he is. Not just the U.S. This is this uh, this is a real boxer right here. Christina Zamora feeding the baby. CSUN alum. We'll bring you some Pliny the Elder soon. Oh, a good right from Alvarado. El Pino Lero looking good. And he keeps. This is another thing with Alvarado. The pressure oh, from him. And, and, and the right hand over the top. Right, body work. On the ropes, Gutierrez. How many times has he ever been on the ropes in his life? You think? Well, probably not, and I don't think he's ever made to be this defensive. And he is getting shellacked here in round number four. And the tweets are coming in from Nicaragua. The more the fighter <laughs> looks good, the more the tweets are coming. We'll get to those between the rounds. But Rene Alvarado looked good through three. Definitely looking good here in the fourth as Gutierrez is trying to hold on. The kid is looking like a kid in the ring right now. And he was very confident. Talked about his plans and his dreams. But Rene Alvarado has dreams of his own and that comes with that right hand oh, that's cracking. He did a beautiful job of, uh, of making Again. sure that Gutierrez threw something wide and he came right up the middle countering off the rope. That is veteran savvy from Rene Alvarado. Landing that right hand. And look at Rene Alvarado in the blue. 
Roger Gutierrez in the red, down with four. Steve, how do you have it? Well, we're getting to a point as we reach the halfway mark where Alvarado can only lose this fight if he gets knocked down once or twice or gets stopped. I have it 40 to 36 for increasingly dominant Rene Alvarado. And then when they're on the inside, Beto, you see what he's doing. Again, he's tucking himself in and just strafing the body, making himself a little bit shorter and just grinding on the inside to the ribs. Body work. As uh, our friend JP Arancibia, who is just all over boxing and loves watching this on Ring TV, said, Yeah, Nicaragua kicking this dude. <laughs> yep, JP, you can become a third analyst with, with that commentary. I mean, it's exactly it. That, I mean, you're watching this and you're watching Rene Alvarado control this fight. Well, again, there's an old saying in football from Bill Parcells, you are what your record says you are, but that does not hold true in boxing because there's so many variables. And again, you can see Alvarado sucking him in and then also counter-punching, using Gutierrez's own movements against him because Gutierrez is very wide, he's very loose with his punches, and he's leaving opening. And again, you see Alvarado shooting up with that left uppercut. Just really mastering him. There's almost a bull against the Matador. But to my original point, the guy with eight losses has fought much better opponents, and it's showing tonight. It looks like when Florida State is over there playing FIU, <laughs> oh, FAU. Oh, wait, wait, that's the FCC. That's <laughs> the FCC. They're the ones with the soft non-conference. I just want to go to Florida State yeah. because you're a, a well, U fan. Well, well, we haven't beat them in quite a long time. Let's stay off of that. But Beto, There's blood from there, oh, Gutierrez's yeah. red eye. Yeah. You know, that goes the soft schedule. You know, it, it goes to the point now. If you are Gutierrez's corner, he starts thinking about throwing in the towel. Really? You're thinking that? Well, listen, Rene Alvarado is not a huge puncher, but he is getting shellacked in there. He is consistently taking the strafing, and it's only getting worse unless they are banking on that one big shot that can grab turn the tide of what's been a very, very one-sided contest. Pretty sure this is the first time that Gutierrez has ever been cut. His fights have never been a challenge for him. And Beto, I think his lip is also bleeding too. He's got a bloody mouth, and he just split out some blood right now. The last opponent that Gutierrez fought was one and seven. Yeah. Before that, four and ten. Right. And Before Beto, that, thirty-one and twenty-nine. Right, Beto. We are talking about fights 16, 7, 16, 15, and fourteen. At that stage, most of the time, you want to elevate the level of competition. Look at Alvarado gritando. Mira muy bien el René Alvarado, el gemelo. Y saludos a toda la familia Alvarado que nos están mirando. Of course, when we think of Nicaragua, the fighter we think of now is Roman Gonzalez. Of course. And of course, the great Alexis Arguello. Can't forget him. Yeah, that was uh, Alvarado said. He's an Oscar and you know who else. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> like, asking a Mexican, who's your favorite? Chavez. <laughs> Alexis. Oh. And this is the thing, this is Alvarado who he is. He comes at yeah. you. Oh, snaps oh. back the head of Gutierrez. Beto, if I'm the corner of Gutierrez, I grab that towel and I'm starting to think about tossing it in. This is becoming not only just a one-sided fight, but really a beating. Do you want to have a residual effect on one night? Sometimes it just ain't your night, and I don't think it is Roger Gutierrez's. This was a test by Roberto Diaz, the Golden Boy Mathmaker, who said we can have him and we can figure out what we have. He's either going to control Rene Alvarado or he could be somebody that we use to fight another fighter at 130. A Charles Huerta. Yeah. A Carlos Morales. A Chimpa Gonzalez. Golden Boy has a stock stable. And Gutierrez, do you bring him to the United States and train here? Do you come get work there? Well, a lot of things with him because he's only 22. Sixth round of action. All oh, Rene Alvarado from the opening belt. Roger Gutierrez. See, even when Gutierrez 
Gutierrez is being the aggressor coming forward. You could see Alvarado. He understands what he's doing. He's going to make him miss, and then he's going to make him pay. And he's done that throughout the night. Oh, and uppercuts right up the middle. And another right hand over the top. Thwani, the word they're telling me to say in Nicaragua. Hopefully it's not a bad word. It means really cool, really nice. That's what they're just using to describe Rene Alvarado. Well, right now it's Viva Nicaragua. Yeah. This has been a brilliant performance by this rugged veteran. Snapping it. Oh, you know, Rule right hand. It's almost like he's hitting a double end bag, Rene Alvarado. Great call right there. You know, that he, is a great. He seems to know where Gutierrez's head's going to be before Gutierrez. Hey, hands down, standing. That's all Will keeping Roger Gutierrez up. Final seconds of the sixth round. And you really have to wonder yeah. that corner of Gutierrez, what they're going to do with their young fighter. Beto, if I'm in that corner, I say, kid, it ain't your night. I, I don't know what the point would be of letting this kid take six more minutes of this. People that work in there, not going to name any names. Three different takes. Wow, Renee is looking good. Renee is hurting this guy. The last one, are oh. they going to stop this? Okay, well, the corner is taking a bit of a risk here with someone else's help. And Renee Alvarado is just steadily beating on him. I can see if, if Gutierrez was able to land a shot. But Steve, he hasn't landed anything tonight no, of power. He hasn't. And, you know, the dangerous part about a fight like this is Alvarado is what I'd call a solid puncher, but he's not devastating. So he's going to keep you around. And those are when the real physical beatings happen is in the long, protracted fight, which is, this has certainly become one, especially when you're taking this many punches like Roger Gutierrez has. Roger Gutierrez, a lot of heart on the kid. I mean, you know when you're coming to the United States, you have to open up some eyes. But you said it, this isn't your night. Maybe they overlooked Rene Alvarado because of the record of what happened. Well, it's like... But also, Steve, sometimes you believe your own hype. No, it, it isn't. And, you know, for Roger Gutierrez to steal a line from the Wizard of Oz, you're not in Venezuela anymore. This yep. is the real world. You're not even in Caracas, bro. <laughs> Maracaibo is where he's from. Miguel Cabrera right now. King Felix, oh. Jorge Linares, and Manny Trio are... Not walking through that door right now for Roger Gutierrez, Linus. <laughs> yes, as you want Rick Patino there, Linus, but the, the, the dangerous thing that I'm seeing... Look, he's way, breathing heavy. Right, and, and the way Gutierrez... Oh, they have stopped it. Yeah, good, good call. Good. Probably about 90 seconds too late, but a good call nonetheless. But good, though. They stopped that fight. Beto, I didn't like the way his head was snapping back, and that's one of the things that the commission members are taught to look for, is does the neck and the head snap back from punches? La esquina de Gutierrez para la pelea, el ganador por knockout. The end comes one minute, 34 seconds, round number seven. The red corner of Gutierrez asked this bout to be halted. Therefore, we have your winner by KO victory, El Gemelo, Rene Alvarado. Joe Gonzalez fights at 126. Thanks for watching us tonight, Rene Alvarado. He fights at 130, he got the victory.